the good, the bad, and the ugly from a Game 2 loss for the Boston Bruins at the hands of the Florida Panthers. Let's get into it, shall we? Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Thursday, May 9th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And before we get started... Quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at Locked NHL Bruins. You can find me, my dad jokes, hockey thoughts at ENC McLaren. I'm a lifelong Bruins fan. Been covering this team for various outlets for 20 years or so. Been hosting this podcast for the past five years. Before that, I was a full time hockey news editor for The Score. Speaking of The Score, it was not in Boston's favor last night. A 6 1 loss. At the hands of the Florida Panthers. And this series is now tied. Heading back to Boston for game three. And that's one of the good bits to take away from this. Uh, the Bruins, yep, yeah, they lost in lopsided fashion. But they still took one from the Panthers on the road. And it's now a best of five with the Bruins having home ice advantage. Uh, Money Puck, however, has the Panthers at 54.2%. Favorites to advance to the third round, but the Bruins are still in a pretty good spot here after taking one of those road games. Uh, you want to steal games on the road, they did so in game one, and they'll now head back to Boston for games three and four. And you can bet the Bruins will be fired up for game three because of how this one ended. Uh, yes, the score was lopsided in favor of the Panthers. But the Bruins showed some fight right to the very end. And that came from one of their best players. No, actually their best player as David Posternock dropped the gloves with Matthew Kachuk. And really, it's pretty incredible that their best skater at the very least was willing to drop the gloves in that way now i was watching the sportsnet broadcast and they broke it down uh pretty good where uh there had been a melee the refs were working things out and pasta and kachuk were uh near the refs clearly jawing each other talking back and forth kachuk said something that pasta did not like pasta went back to the bench Asked Jim Montgomery if he could be deployed back on the ice because he wanted to have a go at Matthew Kachuk. Uh, so with about seven minutes left in the game, more than 100 penalty minutes already being accumulated, Pasta, Kachuk, both jumped over the boards and immediately squared off for a fight that had been planned ahead of time. These guys said something to each other, wanted to have a go at each other, and in a fight that was reminiscent of um, Steven Stamkos, Austin Matthews fighting last year. Uh, who was it? La Cavalier and Aginla years ago. A $20.75 million cap hit fight going at it in this one. Not a fair fight, really, let's be honest. It was just the second fight of Pasternak's career. His first since 2018. Uh, Kachuk has 25 career fights. And Kachuk got the takedown and continued to have a go at Pasta despite him being down on the ice, which is not cool at all. Uh, this came after uh, Kachuk had taunted Charlie Coyle after the Panthers' fifth goal. Brandon Montour did the same to Brad Marchand after the sixth, screaming right in his face, uh, doing the tongue motion. 
kind of recalling one of Marshawn's greatest hits uh, with Ryan Callahan a few years ago. The Bruins were rightly pissed off, and hopefully that will carry over into Game 3. Jim Montgomery said he was proud of Pasta. So many guys out there pushing after the whistle, and Pasta and Kachuk, they went out there and fought, and that's what you like. You like your hockey players to be competitors. Um, he added, Montgomery did, that the extra punches, not part of the game for me, Jim Montgomery said. And Poster clearly wasn't happy about it either, as he jumped back on Kachuk and tried to land a couple extra punches uh, once he was able to get up. Now, Pasta himself acknowledged he's not a very experienced fighter and probably could have done better but the ultimate point was that he is not afraid of Matthew Kachuk he can take a punch he said and I do anything for these guys here and that's one of the good bits we can take away from this game these guys are willing to fight for each other they're willing to stand up for each other and they are fired up now obviously if pasta had been injured that would be a whole different story. That would be bad, if not ugly. Thankfully, it looks like he's okay. And um, Pasta showed that he is, as the best scorer on this team, as the uh, best skater on this team, he's willing to do whatever it takes to get his team going and to stand up for his teammates. And that's the kind of thing that will galvanize the rest of the bunch. A bunch of guys had already been sent off with 10-minute misconducts. Pat Maroon, interesting that um, Maroon or Kachuk challenges Pasta with Maroon already off the ice. Brazo, Frederick, McAvoy, Marshawn had already been given misconducts. A bunch on the Panther side of things as well. Some bad blood in this series. It spilled over with two of the best players in this series dropping the gloves. And... Again, Pasternak's teammates should be well fired up after seeing their best player drop the gloves like that. Now, um, another good thing from this game, Charlie Coyle opened the scoring for the Bruins. His first of the playoffs. Uh, yesterday, I had kind of hoped, thought that maybe Pavel Zaka would get going. One of these guys needed to get on the board as neither had scored before uh, last night's game. Coyle gets on the board, hit the post, uh, another opportunity. The Bruins had a few opportunities in the first period that they could have made it 2-3-0. Uh, Marshawn missed an open net, albeit from a wide angle. Uh, Johnny Beecher missed on a 2-on-1. The Bruins were getting some opportunities, didn't capitalize them on the first period, uh, but Coyle getting that goal and getting him going is a good thing for the Boston Bruins. So when we're talking about the good from this one, Pasternak being willing to defend his teammates, uh, get the guys going, do whatever it takes for the Bruins. Uh, again, he said he would do anything for these guys. It shows that this is a close-knit group, and they're not going to go down without a fight. The score was not in their favor, but uh, they should be ready to go for Game 3. They got the 1-1 split. It's a best of five now with the Bruins having home ice advantage. Uh, so those are some positives that you can take away from game two. There was some bad and some ugly in this one, and we'll discuss all that here as the podcast. There's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build your team. When you're hiring, you quite simply need Indeed. It's the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites, searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. They streamline hiring with powerful tools that find you matched candidates. And with Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed U.S. data. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. This offer is good for only a limited time, so jump on it now. A $75 credit 
at indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply, but if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Check out indeed.com slash locked on. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Bruins part of the uh, daily experience for yourself. Free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, check out the Locked On Sports Today feed. 24-7 news, analysis, opinions from all over the Locked On Sports universe. And uh, free on the Amazon Fire TV channels app as well. So we talked about the good. Let's discuss the bad here and Boston's offense, apart from that Charlie Coyle goal, was basically non-existent. And in fact, Hockey Reference uh, shared that the Bruins, with just 15 shots on goal in Game 2, that's the fewest by Boston in a playoff game in more than 35 years. In 1988, I don't know what was going on that year, but... Uh, They were limited to 14 shots in a game against uh, Montreal, 14 shots in a game against Edmonton, 12 is the lowest, Uh, and that was another game against the Edmonton Oilers. Um, Nothing close in recent years with this group in terms of fewest shots. They had those uh, low shot periods, against Toronto in games, uh, what was it, five and six. But they had been able to generate some shots uh, in game one. Um, Pretty good first period last night, but then just nothing being created. And full credit to the Florida Panthers. They had a rough game uh, defensively in game one with Gustav Forsling, Aaron Ekblad not playing. Uh, the most solid games with some giveaways and poor defensive coverage. But uh, the Bruins in this one, just not able to generate anything substantive in terms of, in terms of offense, 15 shots on goal, uh, six in the first six in the second, only three in the third period. They were down. 3-1 3-1 after that late, very late second period goal. 0.3 seconds left in the game. Then they allowed one early in the third. And uh, that was pretty much it last night for the Bruins. Um, obviously, a lot of that extracurricular activity uh, got in the way of being able to generate much offensively in the third period. But in the second And the first, this game was still well within reach. It was only 2-1 around the halfway point. If they had been able to get it to the third period, only being down 2-1, you you don't feel too bad. But then they gave up the goal early in the first. Uh, Barkov, who was excellent last night with the power play goal to make it 5-1. Brandon Montour with the shorthanded goal to make it uh, 6-1. Bruins really had nothing left to do in this one except rise to the challenge physically and show that they are not going to back down. Uh, Jeremy Swayman was pulled in this one. I wouldn't call him uh, bad per se. Uh, It was, as we'll talk about here in a couple minutes, largely defensive deficiencies that uh, allowed him to give up four goals on 23 shots. 8.26 8.26 save percentage. Uh, he's now down to 9.42, which is still excellent for the playoffs. Linus Allmark came in, uh, played 18 and a half minutes, gave up two goals on 10 shots. I don't think there's really any goalie controversy now. I think they will go right back to Jeremy Swayman. I had suggested after the second period, maybe just putting Allmark in there to give Swayman a bit of rest, give Allmark some reps and regroup ahead of game three. They didn't do that right off the hop, but um, Allmark eventually did come in after that fourth goal. Uh, So where's the offense? Other than that pretty play to set up uh, Charlie Coyle's goal, not much in the way of offense there. Again, Brad Marchand had an open net that was from a very difficult angle. He's 
put it across the goal line. Uh, Johnny Beecher had a great opportunity on a two on one that he couldn't finish. Uh, but otherwise, Coyle Brazo led the way with two shots a goal a piece up front. Uh, it was actually Brandon Carlo who led the way in shots on goal in this one, three from the point for the Bruins. That's not going to get it done. And the Bruins really need to um, just get the puck on net. It's not as if Sergei Bobrovsky has been uh, lights out in these playoffs, even last night. Yeah, he had a 9.33 save percentage in game two, but for the postseason as a whole, his save percentage is only 8.93. So chances are, if you get some shots on him, despite the fact that he's a Vesna Trophy finalist, you can squeak one by. And we saw that certainly in game one. Uh, the Bruins also taking way too many penalties, giving up six power play opportunities. For the Panthers, uh, borderline ugly taking a fifth too many men penalty over the course of the playoffs. Uh, the rest of the playoff field combined, I believe, only has four. The Bruins alone have five. How, how is that even possible? Jim Montgomery did take some responsibility for that after the game, saying, you know, it's, it's up to him to call those line changes and get the guys out there. Uh, but at the same time, guys have to recognize that there's an extra player on the ice and you can't just jump over the boards. Um, really, really discouraging that that keeps happening and you can't give up those free power plays. Um, Montgomery said, it falls on me in the end. We tell people who's up and they're making mistakes. So my clarity with who's up is obviously failing our team, whether it's some guys just being too quick to jump on, guys being slow to get off. This cannot happen. Fifth too many men penalty in nine playoff games. It's it's inexcusable. And the Bruins can't allow that to repeat uh, moving forward. So that's the bad in this one. And, oh boy, there was a whole lot of ugly as well. And we'll break that down here as the podcast continues. All right, the NHL and NBA playoffs are in full swing. It's winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, over-unders, player props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to make every playoff shot count. You can see all the options they have for uh, your bets. And again, any winning $5 bet gets you $150 in bonus bets. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel, America's number one sports book. All right, there was a whole lot of ugly that we need to discuss here. Namely, a bunch of defensive breakdowns that led to Florida's offensive breakout here in game two. Uh, the penalties. Yeah, you can call that ugly, uh, or you can call it good, as I did in the, the case of Pasternak's fight. But the Bruins had so many defensive zone breakdowns that led to pretty much every one of Florida's goals, and that's not why we are not hanging this on Jeremy Swayman. Um, yes, he was pulled, but this performance was not on him by any stretch, and I'd go right back to him for Game 3. Uh, the Bruins did lead one nothing after one period, but um, a bunch of breakdowns led to some goals. Um, Parker Witherspoon, I believe it was, threw the puck up the boards. That was gathered by Brandon Montour to keep it in the zone, and that led to a shot that was deflected by uh, Stephen Lawrence, which was a beautiful deflection. Uh, full credit to him for that. It went off foreboard even, and then he was able to deflect it in. Uh, several minutes later, Charlie McAvoy whiffed on a breakout pass up the boards. 
leading to extended offensive zone time for the Panthers. And yeah, just McAvoy has not looked very sharp lately. He lost his stick on the play, was bounced against the boards. He was cut, had to leave to get that looked at. Uh, but a poor clearing attempt led to that and then led to uh, Alexander Barkov scoring on a rebound chance in front. Uh, and then, of course, with 0.3 seconds remaining on the clock, uh, Brad Marchand couldn't get the puck out of the zone, and McAvoy got between uh, Swayman and the puck. Couldn't see it. Gustav Forsling scores to make it 3-1. And then... The Bruins were only down two heading into the third. There was an opportunity there to come back, but that was quickly erased when, once again, the Bruins couldn't get it out of their zone. Um, Brandon Carlo, Jeremy Swayman were expecting an icing call as uh, the puck was dumped into their zone. Probably should have been icing, but it was waved off. And they did not adjust accordingly. Uh, Swayman left the puck in a tough spot for Carlo, who uh, got knocked down by Alexander Barkov on the forecheck. And then the puck was in the back of the net. Um, Jim Montgomery said they just didn't have the juice. Swayman was terrific, but the Bruins just did not look sharp at all especially with the puck in their own zone and this is something that we've seen many times this season an inability to get the puck out of the zone uh some defensive miscues that lead to costly goals and it cost them dearly here in uh this one again and it brought back those missed opportunities in the first period with Marshawn and Beecher both missing uh, empty net opportunities that could have changed the course of the game. Uh, the Panthers outshot Boston 26-9 over the final 40 minutes. The Bruins, I mentioned lack of shots. They went like 15 minutes at least of game action without a shot on goal. And um, just so many miscommunications and breakdowns in this one. The too many men, the turnovers. Failures to clear the zone. Uh, all pretty ugly for the Bruins. And hopefully they got that all out of their system and are much sharper in game three. Now, it, in their defense, they did look pretty gassed and they had played, uh, you know, coming off game seven, emotional against Toronto. The quick turnaround that... Uh, they had to do like they played games one and two before the puck was even dropped on game one in the Vancouver Edmonton series. Uh, no breaks for the Bruins between these games. They had to play Friday, Sunday as well. So no real breaks coming up, but hopefully they can get home, get refreshed and get back to it in game three, feeling as though they have more to give. Uh, and are inspired by Pasternak coming to their defense um, late in the third period and being willing to drop the gloves with Matthew Kachuk. So some good, a lot of bad, some ugly in this one. But at the end of the day, it's a 1-1 series. The Bruins stole one on the road. They got um, home ice advantage back. Yes, the Panthers are a good team. The Bruins weren't going to go 5-0 and or whatever to steal a line from the pass. Um, everybody, well, a lot of people thought this was going to be a short series in Florida's favor, but by Boston winning game one, they've given themselves a chance here, and uh, hopefully they can rebound and look a lot sharper in game three. One that we will preview on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins because we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and we discuss your favorite team every single gay day, I should say. Thank you so much for uh, checking out the podcast today. Thank you so much for uh, subscribing, downloading, watching on YouTube, commenting. Please do subscribe if you have not already, and we'll 
talk to you here tomorrow on a brand new episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Take care of yourselves, friends. Take care of each other. And uh, happy Thursday.